guys, it's Laura and you're watching Lily Oxani and today I am here with Act 5 of Romeo and Juliet. This is it. This is the last Romeo and Juliet video you're going to get. You're probably all screaming, thank God Laura, why are you up uploading these videos? Oh, well, I enjoy them, okay? Black lipstick, we're talking about Romeo and Juliet's death basically, so <laughs> there you go. Okay, so let's start with scenes 1 and 2 and then we'll go on to 3. So, the sequence of near misses in this section reveals the inescapable work of fate. There is no reason for the Friars clan to go wrong, but an outbreak of plague forces Friar John into quarantine and prevents him from delivering Friar Lawrence's letter to Romeo, while Balthasar seeks out Romeo with news of Juliet's death. Just as the audience senses an unavoidable fate descending on Romeo, so too does Romeo feel himself trapped by fate. But the fate the audience recognises and the fate Romeo has some uh, sees as surrounding him are very, very different. The audience knows that both Romeo and Juliet are bound to die. Romeo knows only that fate has somehow tried to separate him from Juliet. When uh, Romeo screams, Then I defy you, stars! He is screaming against the fate he believes is thwarting his desires. He attempts to defy the fate by killing himself and spending eternity with Juliet. Um, will I, he said, I will lie with thee tonight. Tragically, it is Romeo's very decision to avoid his destiny that actually brings fate about. In killing himself over the sleeping Juliet, he ensures their ultimate double suicide. Though, uh, through the irony of Romeo's defiance rebounding upon himself, Shakespeare demonstrates the extreme power of fate. Nothing can stand in its way. All factors swing in its favour. The outbreak of the plague, Balthasar's transmission of the message of Juliet's death, uh, um, and Capulet's decision to move Juliet's wedding date. But fate is also something attached to the social intuitions of the world in which Romeo and Juliet live. This destiny brought about um, by the interplay of societal norms from which Romeo and Juliet cannot escape see no, uh, seems equally powerful though less divine. It is a fate created by man and man's inability to see through the absurdity of the world he has created. Now, in the scene, we uh, see Romeo as agent of his own fate. The fortune that befalls Romeo and Juliet is internal rather than external. It is determined by the natures and choices of the two protagonists. Were Romeo not so rash and emotional, so quick to fall into melancholy, the double suicide would not have occurred. Had Juliet felt it possible to explain the truth to her parents, the double side suicide might not have happened. Um, but to wish someone were not uh, as they were is to wish for the impossible. This, the love between Romeo and Juliet, exists precisely because they are who they are. The destructive suicidal nature of their love is just as much an aspect of their natures as individuals and couple. In the character of the apothecary, once again Shakespeare provides a secondary example of the paradoxical and pressing social forces at work in the play. The apothecary does not wish to sell poison because it is illegal banned by society, but it is the same society that makes him poor and which insists on a validation of the differences between rich and poor. The apothecary um, is pushed to sell the poison by external forces that he, like Romeo, feels completely um, unable to control. Now on to scene three. The deaths of Romeo and Juliet occur in a sequence of compounding stages. First, Juliet drinks a, po a potion slash poison uh, that makes her appear dead. Thinking her dead, Romeo then drinks a poison that actually kills him. <laughs> Seeing him dead, Juliet stabs herself through the heart with a dagger. Their parallel consumption of mysterious potions leads their deaths 
um, into a peaceful symmetry, which is broken by Juliet uh, dramatically basically stabbing herself in the heart with a dagger. Through Edward Moon and Juliet, Shakespeare has held up the possibility of suicide as an inherent aspect of intense love. Passion cannot be styled and when um, combined with the vigour of youth, it expresses itself through the most convenient outlet. Romeo and Juliet long to live for love or die for it. Shakespeare considers this suicidal impulse not as something separate from love, but rather as an element as much a part of it as the romantic expression of what we saw in Act 2. As such, the double suicide represents both the fulfilment of their love for each other and the self-destructive impulse that has surged and um, floored ben beneath their love for the duration of the play. The friar's embodiment of good and evil are united in a single act, suicide. Juliet tries to kill herself with a kiss, an act of love as, attended, as intended violence. When that fails, she stabs herself with a happy dagger. Happy because it reunites her with her love. Violence becomes an assertion of authority over the self and a final deed of profound love. That is it for Romeo and Juliet. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I will see you guys on Monday for my last of my Sherlock character arc series. It's John Locke. And by the way, it is so, so close to series four. I want to cry, but I hope you guys enjoyed this series and I will see you guys on Monday with a new video. Bye.